Um, and so welcome everyone to our June 15th construction planning meeting. Um, I did uh, have a chance to touch base with Chris Gorman from National Grid earlier this morning and he shared uh, that there is still um, no change in what National Grid uh, has proposed to do um, or the work that they have to do on East Jefferson Street. So um, their work on East Jefferson Street will all take place and conclude before uh, the July 23rd Arts and Crafts Festival weekend. And then they're planning to pick up uh, Montgomery Street uh, the week following the Arts and Crafts Festival, which would be uh, that July 26th week. Um, why don't we go with our, our usual order? Uh, Joe, uh, why don't we start uh, with you and the water department? Sure, can you hear me all right? I got a new microphone and everything, so I don't Coming have to use my phone, so excellent. Um, what I'll do is I'll share my screen again with the presentation that I've had. So, all right. So our project is going along very well. Um, we're a little bit behind, I think, just due to some unforeseen issues and some emergencies that have arisen. So we taking care of those as they popped up and we're, we're moving right along. And our goal is to be not in the Columbus Circle area during the Arts and Crafts Festival. So we've, we're moving stuff to make sure we're not in that vicinity. Um, so just a quick recap, we got our new valves installed on Madison Street that was done back in April. Everything that you see in green has been completed. So pipelining in front of the courthouse and the civic center and the new valve installations have been done. Uh, new valve installations and lining on underneath Columbus Circle have been completed. The new valves installed on the South Warren Street, Jefferson Street intersection along with the new piping is all done. Uh, new piping and valves on the northeast corner of Columbus Circle has been completed. The pipe lining and valve installation on the 300 block of Montgomery is done. We're uh, disinfecting and they're gonna be getting that northern section of that, that line in service here in the next week and a half. Uh, the pipelining on the 200 and in front of City Hall is completed along with valve installations. We are now working at the Fayette Street and Montgomery Street intersection. That's all open cut, open trench. That intersection is closed down at the moment. Our goal is to get in and out of that in intersection in about a week. Once we complete that intersection, we can uh, disinfect all of Montgomery Street up to Water Street and get that back into service. The last section of Montgomery Street we won't be working on until July. We're waiting on a few parts and pieces. These are the bigger, bigger chunks that we're looking at. So it's a 36 inch main we're tying into. So we need several large valves and, and some large piping. This 200 block of, of Jefferson Street in order to get in and get out and coordinate with grid, we're gonna be probably starting at this intersection on, or this street on uh, June 25th. And we'll be going to about June 30th. Once we're done, we'll turn this block over to National Grid to do what they have to do so they can get their stuff done and get get out of this uh, 200 block as well. Then we'll move our way down the street westward to the next block and work on Jefferson Street and finally ending up at South Clinton and Jefferson, probably be here early to mid July timeframe about right now. Uh, as we go to each block, we'll have to be doing temporary service, whatever buildings are serviced off that street. So there's a little, a little bit of prep time, set up time to get those temporary services in and installed and get the buildings uh, water service reestablished before we can start excavating and removing the old main. 
And we are also currently down on the last stretch of Montgomery between Adams and Harrison, uh, replacing that main. Nobody is serviced off of this main, so it's strictly a, a main replacement. And it's uh, basically connects, it loops our piping between Adams and Harrison. Um, so once, this should take us about a week, week and a half, and then we'll be out of that section as well. So the paving contractor doing the downtown paving should have full access to all the streets come late July. And that's about it. Any questions? I do have one. Um, for the what, like the piping, are you guys all set with the information you need from the buildings themselves that need water supply, or do you need anything from the building owners or management regarding how the quantity and that kind of stuff? I think we're all set. A lot of our, our personnel was in each building, looked at each basement, um, and we're trying to give a minimum of a one inch to a, a two inch service, depending on the building, the building type, and who is in the building. Um, but we found that a two inch is sufficient for most buildings that we are, are giving temporary service to for the short duration. Okay, is that gonna be sufficient for 84 residential units? Which building is this? Days Plaza. Uh, let me double check on that and confirm where you guys are fed from. Okay, great, thank you. Yep. I have a question also. This is Peter with the On Center. Um, I see the construction, I'm sorry, I got on this um, call late. I see the construction on Montgomery Street. Just uh, when do we think we're gonna be able to get access to the loading docks? We have an event, a large um, event that's gonna be happening, load in around the 10th, 11th of July. Well, we should be out of that section of Montgomery Street before the end of the month. Okay. okay. If you need uh, access to the loading docks, I talk to our guys and, you know, if you know something's coming in, just give them a heads up. They can put down road plates if they're in that area, but they're going to be, especially in the loading dock area, they're going to be backfilling as quickly as possible to maintain that access for you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you. Thanks, Joe. <coughs> Let's see here. John Kivelhan, uh, could you give us an update, please, on paving? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Um, <clears throat> the contractor is currently uh, focusing his efforts in the uh, 300 block of <clears throat> Salina Street. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, full depth uh, um, removals have been completed. Um, currently, we did uncover some shallow gas services, which were unknown. Um, Master Grid uh, was called on Friday. They started relocating those services. Um, <clears throat> as soon as those services are, are relocated, the contractor is going to start placing his stone, uh, and he hopes, uh, you know, by Thursday or Friday, be able to start. Um, placing asphalt back in the pavement section. Um, so hopefully by um, mid next week, uh, it, it should be repaved. Uh, so I have a meeting after this meeting, I'll have a further update on, on that schedule. Uh, again, it's pretty much dependent on National Grid uh, relocating some shallow services right now. Um, so once that's repaved, uh, we'd be in a position to open up uh, the 300 block to back to traffic. Um, just know it will not be the final paving surface. It'll be, it'll be the uh, binder course. It'll be similar to the, the section of Salina Street just south of Adams right now. Uh, it's still very smooth, but just, just know it's not, it's not the final finish. We still have to come back and do another inch and a half of paving uh, over that asphalt treatment that you'll see. Um, his intent then is to drop back down, go back down to south of Adams and complete the paving both on State and Salina Street uh, with another inch and a half of asphalt on that. Um, once that's complete, then move up into the 400 block uh, and start the necessary payment repairs um, in the 400 block. 
Uh, during that during that operation, our intent is to keep one lane of traffic open and use the other existing city streets uh, as a detour route. But we will not we will not, it will not be a full closure. Uh, we've also discussed keeping a, a lane of parking uh, during that work zone traffic control. So that's that's the update on the Salina Street paving project. Uh, the other paving project, uh, which was Clinton, Jefferson, Montgomery, Warren, um, that contractor is going to start on June 21st. Uh, they're going to start on Clinton Street, and they're going to start uh, on the north end uh, up in the Clinton Square area. Uh, we are cognizant of the farmer's market on Tuesdays, um, but the construction is going to start on Clinton Street and then progress south. Um, and that's that's it for the paving projects update. John, um, after your meeting with the contractors following this meeting, would you be able to um, email a timeline update and I'll just hold I'll hold the notes from this meeting to post until after we have that from you? Yes. And then would that also include an anticipated start date for the 400 block of South Salina Street? Uh, it should. Uh, I just have to talk to the contract. I'll, I'll definitely have an update on the 300 block. Okay. Um, we need to figure out when they're going into the 400 block. Thank you. Uh, any questions for John? And then Chris, I did see uh, Chris Gorman from National Grid was able to join us. Um, I did give a brief update, which was that there was no change. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the same. Um, we're looking to follow Water Department on East Jefferson Street, and we'll be sharing a common trench there. And then um, immediately after the Arts and Crafts Festival, we would jump into Montgomery Street. So we're, we're still kind of dictated by people ahead of us. So. And with the Arts and Crafts Festival, though not a, a paving project, we are um, we are planning to host it. So um, we had submitted our uh, COVID safety plan guidelines to the county. Um, they taken a look at it; it looked good. Um, that was before uh, the governor's announcement of once we, uh, as New York State, reach a seventy percent vaccination rate, um, most of the restrictions will go away. Um, and at the time, I think we were like 1.4% away from reaching that 70% limit. And then we just saw the news yesterday where the governor announced 100% capacity uh, at the Great New York State Fair. So um, our challenge with Arts and Crafts Festival is that it is happening um, not necessarily within a venue, but in public streets. And so uh, right now the city is uh, limited to only accepting events of 500 people or less. Um, whereas venues can host larger, larger crowds. So uh, we are, we're still hopeful uh, that will this will be able to happen. We're moving ahead with the planning as if it will be happening. Um, so I again, appreciate uh, the city and national grid and all the property owners cooperation um, to helping this event take place. Um, Eric or Brianka, anything, or Eric, um, anything you want to add from the city's perspective? Well, thanks, Marika. Um, I think just to repeat what we've talked about in previous meetings, uh, any additional updates are posted on the city's website uh, within short order after these meetings take place. So certainly, as Marika mentioned, any updates from John will also be included in those notes and posted on the city's infrastructure web page. Um, but we continue to be available if people run into challenges or issues. I know that Joe and John have both been responding um, quickly as well. So um, that's it for me, though. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we will see you uh, another two weeks. All right, thanks, America. Thank you.